town there. But, you know, once we started flying off the boat, you know, about, I don't know, 1,500 miles or so south of Virginia Beach, you know, there they were again. Um, and it was it was in my squadron again when the um, the video that's known as the gimbal video now, um, that when that was recorded, when we were on that workup cycle out in Jacksonville. We should play the gimbal video. Jamie, will you uh, please pull that up? Um, Because I want you to kind of uh, give us an understanding from your own expertise, like your technical understanding of what we're looking at. Yeah. So this. So here it is. Is this? So this is. uh, This is FLIR footage. Yep. So this is when I say FLIR. uh, This is what I'm referring to. And uh, right in the middle, the top of screen, you see IR infrared. So uh, that's that infrared mode where we're seeing heat right now. Um, We are in black hot. Um, so that means objects that are darker are hotter. So this object right in the middle uh, is putting heat out. And right now it's it, it appears to be rotating. Is that what it was doing there? Yeah, exactly. So we do see this object right I mean, it looks like a gimbal. That's why it's called it, I think. I didn't name it. Uh, but we do. We see the object essentially rotate from what looks like a horizontal position here. Um, those lines above it represent the horizon. So it's essentially parallel there it goes and it's hard to make out the shape of this thing but it seems almost like a disc with like a, a, a crown on the top and the bottom yeah kind of like it looks like almost like a little little bit of energy coming out from the the poles there if you will that's kind of how i describe it i see like a little bit of the dark you know heat emanating from there or that the energy as i call it and, and is there any way from this video, from th- this uh, equipment, to detect how large this thing is? Uh, there is. So um, the velocity vector in the middle there can be set to a particular size, and that size correlates to a particular length. So that in a dogfight, if you have, um, you know, you're behind a guy and you, you essentially, his wingspan is equal to, the length of those two lines on that circle with the lines coming out, you see that? That's a velocity mm-hmm. vector. Then you know how far away he is, right? And so it's kind of like an analog thing that's not super relevant, like in modern A's, but yes, there is. I don't know, however, what that is set to in this one, so I can't, like, make that calculation for you right now. Now, I know some people who have attempted to debunk this and debunk even the rotation of this object. What? How do you know that that object is rotating? Um... Definitively. Well, so f- we don't, right? We don't necessarily definitively know it's rotating at the end of the day, right? We have evidence that it is, but um, I'm, I don't have definitive evidence that you're a conscious human being on the other side of the table with me either. But <laughs> I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like, we just don't have that information. So you only have video footage, and in the video footage, it appears right now in relation to where it sits on the clouds that it has rotated. Yes. So, you know, we can also we can also see if you—, if you uh, and I know it's been done. People have created models out there uh, that, you know, essentially look at the clouds and they they draw out a flight path that this could be at. And the only variable is essentially how far away the object is. And that flight path obeys, you know, an equation that can be observed pretty readily when, you know, you build the little model. And essentially, if you're at, you know, six miles or so, the object is proceeding in direction, and then when it starts to rotate, as as the aircraft described, it climbs and reverses directions. So you can't quite make that out, but when you when you when you actually model it out, you can see that at these ranges, it does what was was claimed. And I, we're kind of skipping a little bit of the story, so maybe I should back up. Okay. So, you know, when we observed uh, when the, when this object was observed, um, the air crew essentially saw it on what they call a situational awareness page. And so that is a God's eye view of all the um, sensor data and everything else that our jets and other jets uh, put out, right? And so we can put cursors on and move around, select stuff. And what the air crew described during this video verbally uh, is a formation of objects and then the gimbal object. So what happened was, you know, we had all gone out on an air-to-air training mission during this workup cycle off of the aircraft carrier, the Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, and again, we're off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida. And, you know, there's like four or five or six, you know, red fighters, which are uh, our own guys or gals acting as um, the enemy. And then we go up and act as the, the blue fighters and go do our tactics. Um, I was part of the flight. We all flew up there. 
when we kind of run out of gas during the fight, you kind of just return by yourself. And if you still have gas, you continue the fight type of thing. Um, so we don't always fly home together. Uh, and in this case, the air crew from the gimbal video, you know, they knocked it off and started flying back to the boat. Uh, we don't go like directly back to the boat when we run out of gas. It seems counterintuitive, but we have to wait for our landing time. Uh, we can't just come back and land earlier. So it doesn't really matter where we are as long as we're nearby. And we just slow down to what we call our max endurance speed, right? So we just kind of cruise around, put along out there, and just hang out until it's our time to land. Um, and so, you know, while they were doing this, they noticed that there was a group of contacts on their situational awareness page, again, from their radar. And they're like, hey, you know, maybe this is like a penetration test because they'll launch aircraft from the coast, uh, you know, like old, old fighters or, you know, um, just – Things that can move relatively quick, but, you know, not necessarily there to engage us in a dogfight. Uh, to see if we can detect them and intercept them in time and things of that nature. Part of the overall training. And so when they saw these objects, that's what they thought this was. And so they started flying over to it. Um, and they got, you know, they got about, you know, six to seven, eight miles away. Six to eight is what the air crew told me. Uh, they didn't want to get any closer because it was nighttime at this point. They couldn't see the object, which is why they were only in the IR mode. Um, and they essentially, you know, they checked out for a bit and then circled a bit and then flew back essentially as it was time for their recovery. Uh, but what they saw was, you know, you saw the gimbal object that we saw in the film, but there's also there was also a formation of like four to five, I might say six, I don't remember the exact number, but somewhere in the four to six range. Um, objects that were flying in a wedge formation so essentially like a triangle without a base um, and those objects were kind of proceeding along the same line as the gimbal uh, from my recollection the gimbal was you know slightly behind that formation uh, and offset below it and so that formation essentially kind of just turned in in a i'll call it left hand turn in a normal radius of turn to slightly less like but it's got they got all jumbled up so they just started turning instead of like a, a clean turn where they all kind of stay in the same spot kind of a big sweeping thing instead of that it was a lot tighter and they kind of kind of broke down they didn't look like they were in formation anymore